full room today. I think it's an interesting hot topic. Hi, uh, Cherry, how are you? I am good. I am good. Um, awesome. Yeah, how about you? Doing well, doing well. Thanks for asking. Uh, just uh, popped on and we're going to let some people kind of uh, come in at the same time. I know uh, we've had definitely a lot of requests for this, so I know 427. Now, Crystal, were you able to stream it onto the Facebook as well? I streamed it in. It's in our agent locator clients right now, yes. Okay, awesome. Yes. Perfect, that's good. Oh, we're so live. <laughs> we are live, yes. Also on Facebook too. Okay, cool. On your, in your clientele, that's awesome. Yeah, so we, we're keeping it as much private as we possibly can. We don't want to expose it outside to general public. Uh, we want primarily real estate agents um, and other mm -hmm. people that are, might be involved directly in the real estate community to be part of this. So um, we didn't want to post it publicly anywhere. So we didn't post it on our agent locator public page at all. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. So let's actually just do a little bit of a tech check. Um, to make sure that everybody can hear us. Uh, you got your chat on, on your Zoom, guys. If you could just let us know that you could hear us, uh, that would be great. Um, also, I'm going to share my screen real quick. We got yes, 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 Natalie, Anita, Ralph. Oh my God, yes, 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 yes. I, I was gonna read out some <laughs> names here, but it's, it's flying too fast. I think we're doing okay. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So I wanted to take a quick second and we usually, we usually do these. Um, so we do these every Tuesday and Thursday. We've started doing these for our clients right from the get go as soon as the uh, issue with COVID started happening. Um, and we essentially started to roll out specific features that are help our clients kind of go through this process as best possible. Um, we've gone through discussions with other agents, what they're doing currently to do business. Uh, what other agents that are not doing business, what are they doing? How are they communicating to their clients? What are they saying to them? Um, what is the best thing to do right now? Um, and the general consensus um, has been the entire time that we obviously don't want to push a sale. So anybody who uh, does not want to sell right now or doesn't want to buy right now, we, we definitely not pushing a sale in any way, shape or form. Uh, the entire idea is that we want to connect with the clients, communicate with them, um, and you know, find out where they stand. Because right now what's happening is um, people that have needed to buy, for example, let's say I've gone through the process and, and bought a home, but I haven't sold my home yet. Obviously those people have to sell their home. Um, otherwise they're gonna be in a lot of trouble. And there's been instances where people have sold their home and need to get out of their home and they have to buy. So those are typically the only people that are kind of transacting right now. Um, and then the, those that have been able to uh, kind of be on the sidelines, they're waiting on the sidelines, but they're all asking questions. Like they're wondering what's going to happen with the market. How's the market going to uh, shift? Is it going to shift? Um, so we've created two landing pages for all of our clients. Um, and first landing page I've already shown last time, which was this, how is COVID-19 affecting house prices in your area? Uh, this landing page for all of our clients is already available on your, all your websites. All you need to do is shoot an email to support at agentlocator.ca and you can request to have it added. Uh, the landing page is fully automatic so that once somebody puts their address in here as an example, um, they are going to start to receive automatically listings in that area when properties are listed. And in those areas where we have sold data, like Toronto Real Estate Board, it'll actually let them know when it's sold for as well. That's the landing page that has been available for a little while, and you can already request that. Now, this is a new landing page that we just finished today. Um, and this landing page, you are going to, can you guys actually hear me, Kate? Some people are saying the audio is a little choppy. Um, I'm I not can sure hear, if okay. you can hear okay. I can hear okay. So I'm not sure if it's maybe the internet on the other end. Yeah, it might be internet, so audio is fine here. So a lot of people are saying audio is fine there, so we're gonna leave it as is. There's really nothing we can do. For those that are having a little bit of choppy line, um, maybe double check your, your uh, sound, um, and yeah. So the second landing page, just kind of finishing it off, uh, is a let's have a digital coffee and talk real estate. This is more of, you know, you wanna email your entire client base and find out where they stand, if they wanna have a chat, if they don't have a chat. Um, when they fill out this form, the other thing that's pretty cool is I'll show you an example and let's do, I'm going to do a test test. I want to need an email that hasn't been registered before. Let's just put a phone number in best time to call afternoon. Are you currently buying, selling or both first time buyer? Yes or no. 
um, and book your digital coffee. When they book the digital coffee, it lands on this page, which says, hey, the digital coffee has been booked. We inform our client in the CRM to let them know that the lead has come in um, and that uh, they can now communicate with the lead. Uh, and then also we try to get the lead to register on the nosy neighbor tool, uh, which essentially is the same thing as the COVID-19 landing page that gets people uh, updated with when listings come out in the area. So when I click on this, it takes us to this landing page and then they can go through the same process to get themselves set up to get automatic updates on listings. So that is all that I wanted to bring to your attention. So for those of you that want this landing page, uh, we will post about it in our Facebook Agent Low Care Clients group. We will post in all of our um, social media so that we can tell you how to get it. But it's easy as sending an email to support at agentlocator.ca saying, I'd like to have the uh, let's have a digital coffee landing page installed on my website. And it is literally going to be done probably the same day. So we're going to end my part of it there. I, I just want to make a quick comment just because okay. I know there's going to be a lot of questions probably pouring in. Um, so if you guys can use the Q&A for your, your questions, not the chat. That way all the questions are streamlined in one spot and we make sure we don't actually miss any of those questions that you guys have. Awesome. And I know we've had questions come in um, on email as well. So we'll be going through those email questions. Uh, a lot of them are for Cherry um, and, uh, and we'll, we'll go through them as, as much as we can. We're going to let Cherry kind of communicate her message first um, and we will go from there. So why don't I, uh, are there any questions about the landing pages? For those of you that want to ask for the landing pages, I can answer those questions for you and then we can move on to Cherry. Um, so there's a question, uh, how much are the landing pages? So Sandy, these, these come standard with our websites. They're free for all of our clients. We don't bill anything more. Um, if you're not an existing client, then um, you could go to agentlocator.ca and book a demo. So if you go to agentlocator.ca and if you book a demo, uh, we can get in touch with you and show you the product and services that we have. Um, it, it's, you can get these for, basically you'll get a full website, a CRM system, everything for $59.95. Um, and then if you want full lead gen capabilities and do a lot of other stuff, it's $158.95 a month. So that is the cost. Uh, I answered that question. For the COVID response benefit, okay, we're going to leave that for Cherry. If my friend cannot get in, is there an alternative? I'm typing. I am okay. typing. Yeah. Awesome. Crystal will answer yep. that question. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you address income rental? Um, that Sherry, real estate agent, that can be paid under CRAB. Okay. Do you say, you're, did you say you can email the landing page to your current clients? Chair, uh, Sherry, yes. So uh, you can literally take this landing page and our uh, training staff has been doing webinars to show you guys how to put together an email in your CRM and then do a mass email to all of your clients uh, to get them to actually into this landing page. And what's also pretty cool with our CRM is that when you email it to your clients and your client enters the same information here, it doesn't add a new lead. It just updates the existing one saying, hey, you've got a lead that's been in there before and wants to have a digital coffee. Um, and then not only that, but after they register here, if they end up registering on the nosy neighbor landing page as well, it'll just get them set up on the same lead, fully automated without you having to do anything extra. I hope that answers your question. Um, okay, you got that one. Mm -hmm. uh, just want to confirm the income. Okay, that's for how can we get the landing pages? So Ray, uh, again, for the landing pages, if you're an existing client, you email support at agentlocator.ca um, and they will add these landing pages directly onto your website. If you're not an existing client and wish to get more info, you can book a demo. We'll uh, get and, and show you a demo of how that works. I must, I missed Thursday session. Would you know how to Google? contribution is going to be shared. Okay, so for those of you that missed the session, we had a session on Google contribution. So let me go on to our Facebook. Cherry, um, if this goes on a little bit longer than an hour, are you okay to stick around? Uh, yeah, it's fine. Okay. Uh, not, not, not that my part is going to go over. I'm just worried altogether when, when, they, when we answer all the questions that it's going to take a little bit longer. So give me a second. I just want to show them no problem. there was a contribution. So for those of you that don't know, Google has come out saying that they're going to be giving a contribution. Let me 
drag my screen here. Okay, so let me find that post on our Facebook page. It is... Okay, so Google COVID response. So essentially what's going to happen is Google is going to provide all of their existing clients um, some kind of credit. So they have some eligib eligibility um, aspects to it. You would have to be a client for at least a year. Um, and the credit will out basically be automatically uh, put into your account. So we don't know 100% are they going to be give it to every single client. Is everybody automatically eligible or not? But it will be fully automated for those clients that we're managing your PPC campaigns. We're handling all that for you on our end. We're communicating directly with our um, people that we have in Google so that we could make sure that the credit is applied as soon as possible. So that the moment that we have more info, we'll share more info on that page. Okay, what do you do when clients want to sell but tenant is no cop? Okay, crab eligibility, Zane, can you can they be inserted onto the right hand side of the page website similar to Homeworth? Zan, yes, um, support can do that for you. They can place the banner on the right hand side of your website. Answered live. Um, okay. Booking the time for coffee, can I set the time schedule? So Rita, for the time schedule, we haven't created a lot of options when it comes to uh, selecting a time. Uh, we're essentially just left at morning, afternoon, and evening because uh, it'll be really hard um, if a client selects a specific time that you're available at that time. So we try to make it as global as possible because we want to get this landing page out as fast as possible to you guys. So I hope that answers your question. Booking the time for coffee, can I set the time? Or can we answer that one? Um, any other set of fees? So Anita, we don't have any other set of fees for exist existing clients. It is included in the fee that you're currently paying. You do not pay anything else. To sign up with us as a, as a new client, we do have a set of fee. Um, we've reduced that set of fee now, especially for COVID-19, um, as much as possible. So if there's ever a time that you wanted to sign up, this is the time because we've never had lower fees than, than now. Okay, answered live. Um, how can the landing page be promoted? So Nadia, the landing page, you can promote it on Google, you can promote it on Facebook, you can promote it through your, um, through sending a mass email. You can really promote this landing page any way you want. All right. Uh, to, to, I'm trying to get through. See the last question. I know. So, <laughs> my God, there is so many questions. Um, Joe, so uh, how much are the set of fees? So okay. I don't know the exact amount of set of fees. I know that we've lowered it down um, as much as possible. But if you go to book a demo, um, we'll give you that information. Will you be getting recording live? Yes, we will be recording this webinar live and we'll be posting it um, both on our Facebook group and then we'll be emailing it to all of those that have registered to participate. Um, I know we've hit our limit um, on our webinar because our limit is 500. Mm -hmm. So if there was other people trying to get in, they may not be able to get in. Um, for those that are not able to get in, if you have people contacting you, they can go to our agent locator clients group and they could view it there. All right. Um, okay, Cherry. So a lot of these other questions are are here. So we're gonna unless there's something else, Crystal, that I'm not seeing. I know you're going through it as no, well. No, no. I think that there's a lot of questions with respect to those landing pages. So by all means, just email support at agentlocator.ca. They will point you in the right direction as to whether you're yes. an existing client or if if you're a potential client as to who you need to talk to. And then that way we can kind of carry forward with today's topic. Yep. We're going to end it there. We're not going to go any more on. It looks like we have, we have a number of people who are also non-clients as well. So we're, we're going to end it here so we can provide you guys with the information you need rather than go on um, and talk about us anymore. So for all of you, we're going to have Cherry come on now. Cherry, is there anything that you want to share or, or is it more just a discussion? It's more of a discussion, but I will start off with uh, what's available first. 
to Perfect. specifically to real estate agents. And then uh, from there, we will talk about uh, everyone's, uh, the hardest topic is real estate agent qualify for the CERB $2,000 benefit. Right. Um, so should I, should I go ahead? Yeah, yeah. So let, let's go ahead with the with the questions that the primary ones that we've kind of outlined, um, and then we can dig deep into the other questions that people have. And there's, by God, there's many of them. So um, the first yeah, question. I, I, oh, so so yeah. Let me let me just um, sure. mention a couple of things that uh, that are available for sure for everybody first. So then I, I'm sure everyone knows already. I just want to reiterate it. Um, real estate agents, normally you guys are allowed to uh, file your taxes late uh, by June 15th, but your normal tax payable deadline is April, was April 30th. Now CLA came out, the government came out, your income tax payable is not due until August 30th. You don't have to pay it, but you still have the same filing deadline. So the same filing deadline still apply. June 15th is your filing deadline. Balance payable is due August 30th. Now, um, sales uh, in terms of your HST, similarly, HST uh, due date, if you are an annual filer, it would have been due on June 15. It is still due on the same day. You don't have to make the balance payable until um, June 30th. In the past, you would have to make your balance payable by April 30th, but you don't have to do it until June 30th. If you have any um, installment payable that's uh, due on Mar in March, and mid-June 15, it would not be due until June 30th as well. These are all postponed, all available to all real estate agents. Um, now we can go into the CERB because everyone is asking the same question. Yeah. Um, so so CERB um, is the Canada um, emergency response benefit that is open for application just um, earlier this week, uh, yesterday. And um, it is specifically designed to help uh, people who are not qualified for EI um, and they are affected by this uh, COVID-19 closure um, of the entire economy. So the idea is to give people um, about $500 supplement a week to uh, help them through this difficult time. Um, so there has been a lot of confusion. I am really just a messenger reading essentially similar information as you, except that I do have uh, my license. I'm a licensed accountant, so I can understand it a little bit better. So to qualify for this COVID-19, you need to have at least income of $5,000 in 2019, or at least 12 months prior to the day of your application. So. If you had you didn't have income for 2019, but you had income from January to now for at least five thousand dollars, you would still be able to qualify. Um, now, the question that I get the most often is, "Hey, I am still getting income commission check from uh, the deals that I did in February or January because typically closing is 60 days out or 90 days out, 30 days out." So what I'm not working right now, I'm stuck at home taking care of my kids, exactly the qualification required to get um, the CERB benefit. Would you be able to qualify? If you still have income and you're expecting to receive a check uh, now, you would not be able to qualify. Now, um, if you read the, um, the, the criteria carefully, you need to expect that you don't have you don't receive any income in for 14 days since the beginning of the program. I think the beginning of the program, uh, the beginning of the lockdown is about March 18th is the, uh, the, the starting time. So you need to have at least 14 days of no income. And when I say no income, um, for real estate invest, sorry, for real estate agents specifically, it is based on the day, essentially the day of closing. When there is a closing, you earn the income. It's not based on the day that you firm up the deal. Right. Um, so it is really based on when you're, you, you can claim your uh, commission. We might, there are uh, so many questions here. There is yes. a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah, I think Cherry cut off a little bit there. Okay, Cherry cut off. I think we have Cherry back now uh, with us. And uh, as Cherry was answering that question, um, really the, the decision has to be on your part in terms of what you really want to do and how much risk you want to take from that perspective. Um, it's, you know, 
if they they are going to be doing audits, they'll, they'll, they're not going to be able to audit everybody, but they may audit, you know, some random audits and you may get caught into it. So if you don't really need to do that, don't do that. Um, and yeah. yeah. So yeah, we'll, we'll uh, have you continue on with those with the, your typical most frequently asked questions and we can bombard you with some other ones then, Cherry. Um, so a couple more points first um, before we go on with the question. Um, some of them may not apply to everyone, but it is still available. Um, for those of you who have employees, you are eligible to uh, claim 10% wage subsidy up to $1,375. This is available for all employers. You don't need to um, you don't need to qualify for any decline in terms of revenue. But if you have experienced a decline in terms of revenue year over year because of COVID-19, um, and if you can prove that you have revenue decline for 30% or more, you can receive um, uh, seven. 75% wage subsidy from the government as well. It's an application process. You have to qualify on a month to month uh, by month basis. So I think this uh, this week, later this week or later next week, uh, they're going to open the application up. You still have to pay your salary first and then the money will be deposited to you later on. Um, last but not least, which is a pretty favorable um, loan available, loan program, $40,000 loan available um, for small business owners. Um, as long as you have $50,000 payroll in 2019, you would be able to qualify for this loan. This loan is interest uh, free until December 2022. And 25% of it, which is $10,000, would be forgivable if you um, if you repay the loan before December 2022. So it's $10,000, essentially free money, and uh, $30,000 completely interest-free until December 2022. Those that's are all available for small business owners. Okay, and that's small business owners. So if, if a typical agent who's not incorporated um, is not they incorporated, they would still be qualified. They would still be qualified. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. every real estate agent is qualified uh, to get the $40,000 loan as long as they qualify for these uh, factors, which you've just mentioned now. Um, and can you just repeat those one more time for us? So to be able to qualify for the $40,000 loan, every agent can get it, but they have to? They need to have over $50,000 payroll in 2019 and under $1 million, that payroll. Okay. Um, they, they can apply through their own bank, main bank account. Okay. And then when you say payroll, um, does it matter whether it's a salary or if I have somebody as a subcontractor that I'm paying? So I have my assistant, I pay her as a subcontractor or I mm -hmm. pay her on an hourly basis. Does, does that matter? It has to be a salary to be salary. You need to file your T4. T4 has to be filed and that is what's considered mm -hmm. a salary. So it's not a subcontractor. You can't be paying them as a subcontractor. Okay. That makes sense. Not at this point because they are updating their their policy by the minute. So maybe sometime later on if they include that. But right now, as of now, no. Okay. So seventy five percent subsidy. You need to have a drop of uh, thirty percent revenue year over year. year so year. March over March, April over April, and May over May. Then you would qualify to uh, to claim seventy five percent wage subsidy. Um, some of you would have salary employee on your payroll and that could be helpful as well. The last one is the 10% wage subsidy. Assuming that you don't qualify because you don't have a 30% drop in revenue, you would still, every employer out there would still be qualified to claim 10% wage subsidy up to $1,375 per employee. Yeah. And you can't do both. You can't do the 75 and the 10. It's one or the other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so should we start with the marathon of questions here? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Crystal. There um, is there is a good question that I see because I think a lot of a lot of these agents who build corporations for themselves and then pay themselves as an employee um, mm -hmm. instead of just like taking all their gross income. So in those situations, uh, let's say they cut off payments to themselves because they're just not making any income. What would those people do? Would they be just applying for regular EI or are they still falling into this category or how would that work? 
So um, the the CERB benefit, the Canadian Emergency Response Benefit, technically, if you are, your business is unable to pay you because uh, as a result of COVID-19, and the, your business is unable to pay you a salary that they, you, mm-hmm. you normally would draw, then you would then be able to qualify to uh, claim CERB. Now, the key here is that you have to stop working. To qualify for this benefit, you have to stop working completely. So if tomorrow there is a client that drops a deal right at your desk and you decide to go out and do the deal, execute the deal, and there are paper trail and it shows that you're continuously working, then that would not qualify you for CELB. I don't know if that answered the question. I'm just giving you mm-hmm. some ex- yeah, example. There. Definitely, definitely. Mm-hmm. I think there's, yeah, that's been a question. And I know one of the other questions that's come up uh, quite frequently now is rental income because a lot of real estate agents have rental income. If I have a rental property, <laughs> is that considered as income? And can I, been, am I disqualified at that point? So rental income is not counted toward uh, part of this um, uh, uh, program. So rental income, if you receive even $5,000 rental income for the qualification of CLB, it won't uh, count toward the qualification. Um, basically, um, you can ignore rental income unless your rental income is also a result from in, an incorporated business and it's giving you, um, it's giving you salary. Uh, salary or dividend. Either way would, would allow you to qualify. Okay. Does that go for other individuals as well? So there are realtors that hold other part-time positions, uh, let's say out there where they, they work and they're still receiving an income from that. Are they still able to qualify on the CRB if it's affecting the real estate side? Um, I do not think that they would qualify if they do have a job. So they would have to stop working. One of the criteria in CRB is that you need to stop working as a result, result of COVID-19. Okay. And that's working regardless. So if you have a second job that you're working, um, it, it doesn't matter that you were making more money because you were in real estate. You're, you know, it's not considered mm-hmm. uh, unless, I mean, it's not, if you're working somewhere else, you're not, you don't qualify for it. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going through these questions as well, Crystal, just kind mm-hmm. of, uh, Okay, these are I have uh, a Facebook question, which is, uh, will agents be able to apply for support in three to six months after the pandemic when we won't be able, like we won't be receiving any commissions, obviously, because they've been not working, um, but maybe they have income coming in, like from previous deals that maybe they, they closed in, in March, in, in January, February, that sort of thing. Yeah, so it's it's a great question. I think as of right now, because we really know have no idea how long this is going to last and the impact of the economy, and the government doesn't really know. Maybe they have a lot of a little bit of information advantage over us, but they also don't know how many people are truly infected and how to help the rest of us. So as of right now, we're only talking about 16 weeks of benefit, 500. Uh, dollars per week, which is the equivalent to four months. Beyond four months, if you're receiving a paycheck, um, your commission check uh, up all the way up until the end, as of right now, you're out of luck. Uh, as of right now. Doesn't mean that uh, CIA or, or Justin Trudeau is not going to come out and say, no, we're expanding this program. It's just that as of right now. And... There is uh, another question here is I have a few deals to process that will close in April, May, and June, Um, but he's been home, not working, uh, doing nothing. Can he still apply? So um, the criteria, again, it it goes back to the same 14 days. I have to go back to the same website to uh, reread it again and again. Basically, if you are expecting not to work for 14 days, 14 consecutive days, and you you don't have any income uh, for 14 consecutive days within the initial four weeks period, then you would be able to qualify to claim the um, $2,000. And for a subsequent period, uh, you must expect to have no employment or self-employment income. So Technically, if you have no no work, you're not working, not doing any deals, your name is not on any trade record signing off during the first four week, then you are technically eligible to claim the first 2000. Then you won't be able to claim the subsequent um, periods um, uh, benefit. Okay. 
I think a lot of these questions, Crystal, uh, mm -hmm. that are being formed are, are kind of the same questions over and over again yeah. that were answered in one way or another, whether it was directly or indirectly. Um, I think it mm -hmm. would be probably fair to say that in, in, if there's questions that you guys currently have that you haven't had answered, um, ask them now, and then we can kind of try to formulate a response. And please be considerate that some of the questions are really repetitive there's still questions coming in. Mm -hmm. So let's see what we get in. Um, do you have to pay back the loan? So uh, the, do you have to pay back the loan, Cherry? Uh, for the $40,000 loan, you do have to pay it back, but only um, the $40,000 loan, $10,000 you don't have to pay back, assuming that you pay back the entire $40,000 before December 2022. I myself am going to apply for this. Uh, I myself am going to apply for this loan as well. I so, just have to pay back before December 31st, 2022. So before December 21st, 2022, it's a tax-free loan. And if you pay back before then, you essentially get $10,000 uh, that you keep from it. Yes, and interest-free. Interest-free, so yeah. Does and the government stipulate how you use that loan? Because I've had someone mention that to me. Well, I'll just take that loan mm -hmm. interest-free, pay off another loan that I currently have somewhere else, and and then yeah. I reduce my interest payments on on the payments on the loan. Is that something that can so, be done or no? See, um, the application on all the websites uh, basically is a self-declaration similar to CLB, but one of the criteria that you have to sign off on is that, hey, you're using the loan for running your business, uh, not for any other purpose. Uh, so this is what you have to sign off on. Mm -hmm. um, as long as you're comfortable signing off that, uh, I don't know how likely and how they would confirm whether you're using the money for business or not. Mm -hmm. um, if it is in the corporation, it's really simple. Is it staying in the corporation using it to, be pay, to pay all these payroll and credit card expenses? Then that would be how you determine it. You just have to feel comfortable doing what you're doing. Okay. And do they have to, when submitting like GST, do they have to add the, the CRIB payments as income? CRB is going to be taxable income. It's not on the GST return. It is on your income tax return. Uh, okay, so we have a question here that might be, so uh, this is from Sharon. Uh, the question is, mm -hmm. we are a husband and wife realtor team. I have not been working. My husband has not either, but he gets CPP. Can he still claim the CERB benefit? He gets a C, uh, he gets CPP benefit. So Canadian pension, right? CPP is Canadian pension um, I think one of the question is on the CPP benefit that, um, one second. Yeah. I think he would be able to, um, get it. I need to double check. Um, it is one of the uh, most popular questions. And so if you are receiving, um, other benefits, you may still qualify depending on what it is. So let's see what else we have. Paid more than fifty thousand last year. Uh, I paid more. You know what? I'll let you. I'll let you because you, it's going to be hard to uh, to multitask on this one. So while we have uh, Cherry that's looking this up, um, mm -hmm. we are going through your questions, guys, as much as we possibly can. Um, there are. A lot of them. <laughs> Cherry, if we were to do this a second time, I think it might be a good idea. Uh, well, I think even if we take all these questions too and create like a Q&A page, right? <laughs> where like it kind of like consolidates all these questions into yeah. hey, these, these five questions are the exact same thing, just worded so differently. Here's what answer. we will do then is what would be great is if we'll, we'll go through this video. We're going to cut up question, answer, question, answer, question, answer, and then we'll create a page on our website that's a Q&A page that kind of says, here's the scenario, here's the answer, here's the scenario, here's the answer. So uh, go ahead, Cherry, sorry. Um, to answer the previous question, um, in the FAQ page, it doesn't really specifically address uh, CPP, but it does have a question about special benefits such as maternity and parental benefit. Um, so if you... Um, 
there are certain criteria that you have to meet. You are expected to go back to work, and you may not be able to qualify for CLB. You you need to be able to stop receiving those benefits. Now, it's not a one size fits all, and the answer to the FAQ on the FAQ page doesn't really address CPP. I can't really tell you 100% that you won't qualify. Okay, so it is best a- to call call in. Yeah, that, that's a, that's a call in question, and that, that that's a great mm-hmm. question at the same time, and uh, definitely something that that will uh, can be looked off later. Um, so we have questions where agents are saying, "I have a listing that is active; nobody's viewing it right now because there's really not a lot of activity, um, and it's going to be active through April, the entire month of April. Can I still claim?" that is that considered as working or not considered as working? Um, if you have an agent, um, I'm sure there's a lot of other experienced agents that can chime in as well. If you leave it on the market, chances are it's not going to do anything. And if it doesn't do anything, it doesn't look good to have the number of days on the market for so long anyway. And it doesn't help with your case when you are trying to say that you're not working, but you have an active listing, right? Yeah. Now, how likely is CIA going to check the listing, active listing during that period of time? I don't know. I can't tell okay. you, but technically you're still working. So this goes back to the, to the concept that it, it really depends on the risk that you're willing to take at that yes. point, because there is a paper trail Absolutely. of that listing being active. And if Sierra was to check, was that listing active in their eyes, you are working, even though you're not making money, you're still actively working and doing business. Um, so mm-hmm. it really depends on how, how, what you want to do. And there's some cases, for example, I know some of our clients are telling their clients, we should take the property off the market but their clients are saying, no, I'm going to keep it on the market. It's going to sell. It's going to sell. So it's a client forcing it to be on in certain cases. Um, so that's, that's sometimes the, the downside on, on that perspective. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So I hope that answers. Uh, that was a question by Don Monson. I hope that answers your question, Don. Um, we do have a Facebook question from Renju here. Uh, it's a good, it's a valid one. Um, so apart from the, the CRB, is there any other benefit for realtors who have been, you know, forced to stop working because their kids are at home and now they have to watch them? Would they still apply for the CERB or would they apply for an alternate benefit program? This is exactly the program that they would have to apply. CRB's uh, qualification criteria specifically call out for people who also need to stay home to take care of their kids and elderly parents or okay. cannot work because they are required to stay home to quarantine themselves. So this is a specific benefit designed for that purpose. Perfect. Okay. But they still can't be working, right? Yeah. They still, it's this criteria yeah. is still that even though, you know, even though you meet one criteria that, oh, I have to stay home with the kids. Um, but the criteria is meaning that you're staying home with the kids and you're not supposed to be working. So you can't transact, you can't do deals. And, and be able to qualify for it. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Um, another question by, uh, this is a kind of repetitive question until we can find other ones, Crystal. Uh, mm-hmm. May I have the criteria for the 40K loan again? Um, what if I still owe taxes for 2019? Uh, so 2019 taxes at the beginning, I already mentioned, you don't have to pay until August 31st. Um, that's for 2019 tax return. Um, now, for the $40,000 loan, the criteria is that you need to be able to show proof that you have a, a payroll of over $50,000. So you would still qualify uh, even if you have a, a payable, uh, income tax payable for 2019. Okay, so you still qualify uh, even mm-hmm. though you haven't paid taxes in 2019 because they've been deferred over. All right. Yeah. So um, so for some of you that are asking, what's our YouTube page that we're going to host uh, or post this on? It's Agent Locator. So if you Google or if you go to YouTube and search for Agent Locator, um, it will be on that page mm-hmm. as well. Uh, all right. So I've made commission. Um, I, here's another kind of repetitive mm-hmm. question. I did a deal in January but got mm-hmm. paid April 6th, do I still qualify mm-hmm. for 
uh, CERB. So this is a repeat, repeat question and it's, it's being repeated many, many different ways. It's just the dates are a little bit off. So mm -hmm. uh, let's answer this one and maybe, maybe that, will, that will shine the lights. So again, I did a deal in January, but got paid in, on April 6th. Do I still qualify for CERB? Yeah, so uh, great question if you get paid April 6th and assuming that from January to now you stop working completely, there is no more work, no more deal in the pipeline, you would be able to qualify to, um, now when, I, when, when you say uh, you get paid April 6th, it has to be the day of closing. So the day that you deposit your check is completely different. It's the day that you did uh, your closing. And assuming April 6th is the day of closing, then you wait for 14 days before you can apply because you need to have that period of time that you're not working. All right. I hope that is a good answer for you. Uh, there is a question is, part of being able to get the CRB, does it one need to file their 2019 tax return first? Mm -hmm. No, you don't. Uh, it's a self-declaration um, self uh, application. Um, you need to declare that you earned that 5000 because the qualification is that $5,000 uh, income. And you need to be able to declare that um, you know what you, do, you did. Um, we always advise our client to file their taxes online on time because it's not the taxes are not due until much later anyway. May as well just file it on time. Um, and then it helps with everything else as well. Later on, if they come up with new programs to help others, they would always go back to your income and you already have it done. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's another one. Um, this is by Andy. And the question is, uh, if you cash in some of your stocks, would that be considered income? And are you not able to apply for CRB? But I'll ask another question here, but let's answer this one first. So let's say outside of T, uh, TFSA account, if I sell stocks, meaning that I am taking a profit on the stocks at that time, that's considered as income and that's taxable income. Mm -hmm. um, so as long as you don't have, uh, you stop working. So I would consider that as stop working. Like you, you cannot have self-employed income and also employment income. Then you should be able to qualify. Okay, so if I sell stocks, meaning that I've taken my profit, uh, you know, let's say I bought a stock three years ago and I sold my stock today, the profits that I'm taking on those stocks is not considered as income. There are two sides of the, I think the question comes from the fact that, hey, if I sell my stock, would that affect my eligibility to, uh, to claim CERB? So your eligibility to claim CERB is that you have to stop working and then you also earn income in 2019 or 12 months before um, your application date. So those are the criteria. Um, stock is completely irrelevant in this, in this okay. types of criteria. So Andy, I hope that answers your question and then you, that mm -hmm. it's irrelevant from that perspective. Um, Just going through a lot of these are duplicated questions. So. Does the loan require a certain credit rating? Uh, I don't believe so. Where from home? Hey buddy. <laughs> Say hi. Uh, does loan require a certain credit rating? I don't believe there's a rating uh, that's involved. On the credit no. no, the the loan is fully uh, guaranteed by the government. Um, so they they have already mandated all the charter banks, uh, essentially all um, the big big five banks, uh, to provide a loan, and they are mandating the banks to make the process as easy as possible. So it should we are expecting it to be as easy and simple as CERB application. Okay, and then. Uh, the, the, there was a question, can you uh, give a link for the interest-free loan? Is that just done directly through your bank? So you contact your bank, whatever bank you're dealing with? Yes. So I can share the link about the program on its own, but you're not applying through the government website. You're applying through your bank. Right. That's where they want to bank has it. already. Each bank already came out with their own um, page and you need to According to what I read from the bank's website, multiple banks' website, it looks like they need you to have the existing relationship with them. At least you have a business bank account with them um, to qualify for the, um, for, to work with that bank. Okay. Otherwise they won't accept new clients. 
so you have to have a relationship and i think every agent in this in this group should yeah. have some kind of formal relationship with one of the big banks uh, and you just contact them they can send you the actual application form i know yeah. my bank emailed they mass emailed all the business clients exactly. with the actual qualifications um, and then how to apply right on that website uh, on their on their email um, mm -hmm. there was a, there's another question that says if the rental income is affected due to covid-19 does it have to mm -hmm. be uh, consolidated because of multiple properties? Um, so I can reread the question. If the rental income is affected due to COVID-19, does it have to be consolidated because of multiple properties? To qualify for CLB, I am guessing that is the question. The, it kind of ends there, so I didn't. I didn't really. Um, I don't know. So let's say scenario then is I have my properties under my corporation, and my corporation in 2019. Then in this case, let's say that a certain amount, and now in March of 2020, you have to be 30 percent less. Maybe this this might be a question. I uh, see for the question you asked here is not not really not in full, so we can't put it together. Um, it's hard, mm -hmm. so. <laughs> Uh, let's see if we can find some other ones here. I have, so someone, if somebody, so Robin is asking, um, if someone still has to pay back the CRA for some HST and taxes for 2018, are they still able to, to qualify? Are they looking at any of that? Is the government looking at any of that information? Not just 2019? No, government is not looking at any of those information, uh, but the HST that you owe and taxes that you owe from 2018, um, interest is still being accrued. So there is no uh, exemption to those amount because it has been owed before, not okay. during this pandemic time. Okay. There was a question about garnishment and mm -hmm. the, the, I don't see the full question here though. Um, if, if So whoever asking about the garnishment question, if you could just actually repeat the question, um, on the chat so we can kind of see it there. Mm -hmm. Can there be a gap between the first and subsequent CERB? Yes, yes. Um, it is, uh, you may stop working and you may go back to work and the moment that you go back to work, you don't qualify anymore, but then subsequently, if you, uh, you are out of work again, you have to be expecting to be out of work for 14 days or longer then you can reapply okay so, so that would uh, go with this question then that they applied for the CREB and then after applying did a deal he would then have to wait the 14 day period of not working to reapply is that if you did a deal then then chances are you're working and mm -hmm. chances are you don't qualify for the CREB to begin with okay so if he the deal has working, to be done. Okay, so like if he was not working, let's say, and applied for the CRB, then all of a sudden someone came out of the blue and needed to buy something, he went and sold them that house, he no longer would apply. Mm -hmm. Now, um, so the, yes, exactly. So how do they know? I, I don't know because the deal is not closed until probably um, a few months later. Mm -hmm. Would CLA find out uh, would CLA actually find out um, you work during the, this time? I doubt it, but that's really the, like you're taking the risk there. Okay. Um, and those $40,000 loans, those are, uh, when can people start applying for those? You know? I think it's supposed to be open either this week or next week. And just to reiterate, you need to have at least $50,000 payroll. To qualify okay. for the loan. So payroll again is you not can considered. Be you can be self-employed. So if I if I'm paying myself on that payroll, does that qualify? There is no reason to do the payroll if you're paying yourself. Like you you won't pay your, you won't pay yourself unless the corporation is the one, and then you are. Um, so as a corporation, you are going out as a seller. Right. I have. Let's say I've incorporated. And I have I have a salary that I'm actually I'm taking a salary and I'm paying the EI yeah. and I'm paying the CPP on that yep. salary for myself. And that salary mm -hmm. is, let's say, 50000 Does that yep. qualify? Yes. 
that has to be 2019. Okay, so that's you, you do qualify if you a, are a single basic operator and you have a corporation, you're paying yourself a salary, um, then you do qualify for that loan based on yourself as the employee in that case. Yes, you also pay, you can probably also qualify the 10% wage subsidy as well under that scenario. You may or may not qualify for the 75% wage subsidy. Right, okay. All right. Um, uh, what about there's one um, question that, go, ahead. go ahead chair no go, go ahead. ahead chair yeah there, there was there, there was one question about can you pay yourself dividends to qualify uh for the loan is no uh you need to have the payroll not dividend uh but yeah. if you're talking about receiving dividend to qualify for cdlb that would still qualify okay um, there was a question as well for Cherry. Uh, Cherry, you're out of Toronto, right? You, you, yep. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself so that people that don't know who you are um, get to know you? Better? All right. I forgot to introduce myself. Uh, I am a charter accountant. I specifically work with uh, real estate investors and real estate agents to do their tax planning, tax returns, and also um, uh basically advising them everything from, uh, from the financial perspective. Uh, I spoke at RealtorQuest last year. For those of you who are US, realtor, real estate agent, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but I was planning to, hoping to speak at this year's RealtorQuest on incorporation for realtor as well. Um, but we haven't been able to do that. We don't, we're not doing it for, um, we can't do it until the fall. So I don't know how that it's gonna come along, but, um, so that's me. That's me there with my son. Uh, basically, that's all I do. And I also do a blog post for people who are interested in getting real estate tax tips. Um, my website is realestatetaxtips.ca. Uh, I am working on a book um, for specifically for real estate agents. If you are interested in, um, in keep getting in touch and getting the first tip to my book, I'm still working on it. Uh, feel free to sign up to my website and I will share it with my list um, first. That's awesome, thank you so much. And then your, your email, uh, admin at ccpa. So if people wanted to reach out to you directly and be prepared for a lot of emails because we have a lot of questions, <laughs> um, you will admin at ccpa, is that a good email for you? Yeah, um, you can also fill out the form. You can just subscribe to my list. Um, that's, that's what I do. Awesome. Awesome. And um, from a, from a tax perspective, I mean, you, so you work specifically in pr your primary clients are real estate agents and our real estate agents hire you to do their taxes. Um, and you are, uh, you're based out of Toronto, um, as we've yep. mentioned. So um, mm -hmm. that's awesome. And 416-548-4228 is your phone number as well. So for those yeah, of you- My really office phone number. Office, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome, 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 awesome. Uh, I wanted to make sure that that uh, that goes out there as well, um, and then we'll post this information to our uh, clients as well in our agent locator clients group, um, so that everybody can get that uh, get that contact information and uh, get what they need to get from that. Um, I truly would love to keep answering a lot of the questions that keep repeating in in a similar fashion. Um, it's, we will put together, we will cut up the videos. We will put together a question and answer kind of uh, Q and A form uh, on the website and we'll post out the answers as best we can. Uh, we'll work with Cherry as much as we can to really get the, get the answers as well um, that we may not have uh, an answer to. Are you Cherry, are you also on our agent locator clients group? I'd love to invite you in there so that we can have you in there as well. If we're not Crystal, if you can send an invite mm -hmm. uh, to Cherry. Sure, send me the invite. That would be okay. great. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, and outside of that, um, we we truly would love to keep Sherry on here for as long as possible. She's already given us uh, a lot of her time and we've, we've really passed uh, that time. And I, uh, I really wanna thank her. I wanna thank all of you for, for joining us. And um, 
if again for other questions we'll post the the page on the website and we'll email all of you the recording we'll email cherry the recording as well so she has the recording mm -hmm. so that we can kind of go through it again um and that's it is there anything else crystal from your side that we possibly may not have covered i don't think so it just looks okay. like there's a lot of questions that Possibly I'm going to have to go through and <laughs> organize it here. Uh, but you know what? I think a lot of people will benefit from this. I mean, there's a lot of questions out there and, and we can work hard. I can, I've got the team. We can all work to, together collectively to try to organize these questions so that we can get those answers and posted for, for everyone, you know, sooner rather than later. That's great. Sounds good. Thank, that's great. Thank you for having, having me. appreciate that. Yeah. You're most welcome, Cherry. Thank you for, and your time for, for coming here and providing all of us with the insightful information. You're, you're absolutely a wonderful person for doing this for us. And mm -hmm. um, we'll, we'll, we'll find from our clients, maybe uh, we'll do, because there were so many people on the session, there may be one where we can just for our clients in the event uh, that we may do a little bit of a private session as well. So we'll, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll get you invited again and uh, hopefully we can do this. Well, hopefully we don't have to do these, but you know what? There's going to be very, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of real estate related questions. And now that we've kind of uh, met each other and got introduction to each other, maybe we can do these maybe once a month where we answer clients, our own clients, you know, questions outside of this crazy world that we have right now. Awesome. Sounds good. We can do, uh, we can do an incorporating class hopefully in, in a couple of months. Yes, yes, <laughs> wonderful. Thank you guys so that much. Really more appreciate fun. all of your time. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, bye. Bye, guys. Have a good one. Thanks, everyone.